Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, Deep Adventure Ministries, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. If you haven't abandoned yourself to God's will, you're really living a life kind of out of sync. You ever feel that, that you're not a fully integrated person or your life just seems to be out of sync and you can't just seem to get it right? It's because you're not, you're, you're not tapped into the, to this to the perfect uh, plan that God has for your life. He has, He created you with a unique set of uh, skills and desires and aptitudes, and He has an incredible plan for you. And the coolest thing about abandoning yourself to God's will is that when you do that, you get to see stuff happen. You get to see stuff. You get to see things. Uh, you get to see that secret hand of the Lord moving in your life, in the lives of the people around you. You see things like, how does, how did that happen? And it's because you've been walking in God's will. So you get to be, you get to be, uh, I guess what they say, right under the spout where the water comes out. You get to be right in the middle of everything. So we encourage you to do that. We challenge you to do that, to seek the Lord and open your heart to him and say, Lord, not my will, not my boring, kind of jaded, kind of selfish will, but your exciting, thrilling, adventurous will. What could be more exciting than knowing the God that created the universe that created dinosaurs. I mean, how weird is that? How unusual of a God do we have that would make uh, black holes and quasars and and even make weird things like me and you? You know, God God is a, God is a kind of a bit of a character, and He's got a great plan for you, a joyful plan for you, and a, a way that will make help you to make your life make sense. So why are you hiding from Him? People keep saying, "Well, uh, God is hiding from me. I need empirical evidence that He exists." Well, guess what? You think that's an accident that God's kind of hiding from you? He's hiding in wide open spaces. Um, there's, I believe it was C.S. Lewis that said that God hides just enough so the man who doesn't want to find him won't, but the man who really, the person who really does seek him will. Uh, we're going to be doing a skit on our Long Ride Home series. We're going to be filming in a couple weeks where we're going to have the Bigfoot hanging out all over, all around us whenever we show up different places. We're going to be sitting in a restaurant complaining talking about how people around here think there's a Bigfoot, but we know he doesn't really exist, and he's, he's the one serving them coffee, you know? God is hiding in plain sight. It's time for you to stop hiding from him like Adam did in the garden. Remember, it was God that came seeking Adam. Adam, where are you? And God is, asking, God is knocking and seeking you out uh, in the hidden, the hidden places of your life to give you freedom from that stuff that you can't break those patterns of your life you can't break, the sin in your life you can't break, and to give you an awesome, awesome plan for your life. So, man, get with it. Uh, you, were made for, you were made to have a great, adventurous life and abandon yourself to God's will. You get, to have, you, could tr- you get rid of all that stupid drama in your life, and you get real adversity, the Rocky Balboa sort of adversity, the overcoming sort of adversity that turns your adversity into a real adventure. Uh, we have as our co-adventure guy today, Peter Andrastek. Uh, I don't know that we've ever had ever had a metalhead uh, on our show <laughs> before, uh, but he, his history, uh, he, was, he was raised a Catholic and, uh, and went on to d- develop a deeper walk with the Lord and now is responsible for uh, parish, mission, mission re- parish church renewal, and he does uh, church missions with his, his organization, Evangelical Catholic. Dot org. That's evangelicalcatholic.org. Peter, am I saying your name name right? I want to say Peter Andrastek. Is that right? It's close. It's Andrastek. Andrastek. What, what, what yep. nationality is that? It's Polish. Okay, so you're almost as good as me. I'm Ukrainian. That's close. <laughs> almost. We're yeah. neighbors. Anyway, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. So uh, just give us a little bit before we get into your background, a little bit about what uh, uh, your ministry, evangelicalcatholic.org, is all about. Yeah, Evangelical Catholic is a nonprofit that's based in Madison, Wisconsin, and um, we work with parishes, campus ministries, and dioceses around the country and help them to do evangelization more effectively. Um, so what we don't 
do is we don't look for ways to get people more involved in ministries and volunteering and things like that. Rather, what we do is we help the ministry to focus its efforts on forming and equipping the laity for personal apostolate. And so um, apostolic holiness is, is, uh, is the focus. And so we just uh, help parishes to, to have a vision for that. And then we form them and train them in the, the methods, the skills of, of doing that. What do you mean by apostolic holiness? So oftentimes people tend to drive a wedge between holiness and evangelization or holiness and apostolate. Apostolate, you could just think of as another word for evangelization for, for our purposes here. Um, and basically, people tend to think of evangelization or apostolate as something that you do, right? And holiness mm-hmm. is, holiness is uh, something that you are. Um, but unfortunately, that tends to drive a little bit of a wedge between it. Think of evangelization as the radiation of holiness. Um, there is really no such thing as holiness that isn't of its very nature apostolic or evangelical. And for the lay faithful, um, that takes on a secular tone because we are called to live our relationship with God in the middle of the world, and we have a secular character. And so our holiness radiates forward. You could say that um, other people must live off of our interior life. It radiates uh, from us. And so evangelization isn't doing something as much as it is being someone for someone else. And you just can't help it. I mean, when you really are in love with the Lord and you're spending time with Him, He he will lead you through a process of more and more being separated to Him, that holiness uh, mm-hmm. that, that m- makes you unique. And when you have a personal relationship with the Lord, when you spend time with God, you can't help but become, come out of your prayer time and say, who, who can I tell next, you know, about about the Lord. You know, there, there's a verse in eight, uh, Psalm 1830, I believe it says something, it's around that area. It says, he trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. I've always loved that, that, that psalm. When I, got, when I received my first degree black belt, that's what I, uh, in ninjutsu, that's, that was my motto, the one by that, uh, that says that, by the I can crush a troop, by the I can leap a wall, you know. But mm-hmm. prior to that, his statement, he trains my hands for war, it says, he leads me to the high places and makes my feet like a deer's feet. If you don't have that time in the high places, if you don't have time spending time with Jesus, if you're not spending an hour every day with pr- in prayer, as far as I'm concerned, you're a poser, and, and, and you're not going to have that radiant life, that automatic overflow of evangelization. What is your prayer life like? That? What's, your, what's, what's the pattern of your day and your week as far as your prayer life? Sure, that's a good question. So I live, I live a, a pretty regular plan of life, and um, I do... Um, my plan of life is uh, a half hour of mental prayer in the morning. A half what do you, hour. What, mental... what, 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 what do you mean by mental prayer? Remember, we're talking but, to the we're talking to the the whole world here. You know, all all over the world, people, and even in Belarus, Russia. So uh, the guy in the black pickup truck, who never even heard of. What do you mean by that statement? Mental prayer. Yeah, yeah mental prayer is uh, prayer without the noise of words. So um, it's it's a kind of an open ended conversation, speaking and listening, primarily listening with God in just a heart-to-heart sort of a way. Um, And so, um, you know, some days that looks like meditating on scripture, some days that looks like meditating on a quote of a saint, sometimes, some days that means uh, sitting and just listening, um, opening your heart to God, talking about whatever's on your mind, if you're preoccupied with something or something's troubling you or um, kind of giving that over to the Lord and, and, and listening. Um, when, you, when you talk about meditating on Scripture, uh, you know, Scripture is, kind of, is like a love letter to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is, what, so someone is hearing you, they're going, I, I, right now they just turned on the show and they're like, man, I got, I, I got to get right. Something isn't right. I need to get in sync with my life. Maybe I need to know the Lord more deeply. What would you suggest for them as far as the way they approach uh, say they open up to the book of Psalms. What would you say is a way, uh, what, what, would, what would be that form of prayer where you're listening while you're reading? What does that mean? Or you're, or you're talking to God while you're reading? Sure. So um, kind of the ancient, 
you know, tried and true uh, method or structure of meditating on scripture called Lexio Divina um, is where you, you, first of all, kind of prepare yourself to listen to God's word. You have to make an act of faith. You have to approach scripture like no other book. You have to approach scripture just as you said, like a love letter from God. You have to make an act of faith and believe that God is going to speak to me in, in this passage somehow. And you kind of like ask the Lord, you can ask the Holy Spirit for, for inspiration and for guidance. Say, so, you know, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Mm. And then you begin to read a small passage. And a, a good, I guess a good guide for this is, is to read until something kind of jumps out at you. Okay, it might be a word, it might be a phrase, um, it might be a concept. And sometimes it can be very, very subtle. And so we have to read very attentively, very slowly, very attentively. This isn't reading in the same way that you would read like a science book or a, or a novel or something like that. Well, listen, we got to take a quick break. Speaking of things jumping out at you, we're about to have a break jump out at us. We're talking with Peter Androstek uh, from evangelicalcatholic.org. We're going to talk more about uh, his, his life of prayer. I think it's so interesting when you meet someone who has a ministry or is going deep with the Lord. I always like to ask him about the prayer life. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're talking about the adventure in prayer. Uh, the journey that God has each of us on is unique. I'm reading from the Catholic Catechism today around paragraph 2704 or something. It says something like this, that God has a unique approach to prayer for each individual person, a, a unique path to prayer. Now, it's very important when we read that, that you read that within the context of the whole catechism, and that is that there is only one way to God the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. And he's provided us with a, in the context of the Catholic Church, the sacraments and, and the, the moral and doctrinal teaching of the Church, the spiritual life of the Church, there are, there are different approaches within that context to the Lord. Everyone has a different uh, sort of uh, 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 personality and mindset. And so there's this great depth and great wealth of different ways that we can pray. Some like to pray uh, the rosary. Some may want to pray... Uh, you know, more of the contemplative type pr- prayer. There's so many different ways of praying. And we're talking with Peter Andrastek and about his own personal life. I just think it's always fascinating when you see someone moving and basically riding a wave of the Holy Spirit and their life is really uh, is being used in a beautiful way by the Lord. It's so, so cool to ask, well, where does that come from? And he's talking about his personal prayer journey. You were talking about uh, the, the meditating on Scripture and how the, how the Bible will speak to you or the word of God will speak to you. Can you tell us about that again? Yeah. So, um, so basically, you know, you, you ask the Holy spirit for, for guidance and you open and you start to read and, um, you have to make an act of faith that the Lord is going to speak to you through the words well, what, of scripture. What, what, is an act, is what, words. what is an act of faith? Um, Lord, I believe that, that this is your word. I believe that you are, uh, the author, um, and speak to me. I believe that you have something to say to me. So an act of faith is just um, what you're doing is you're, you're raising, you know, you're committing your whole self back to God. What if you don't um, have faith and you want to open the Bible? What would you say to God? Keeping it real, what would you say? Um, I would say be real. And if you're the type of person who is sitting and opening the Bible and saying, I feel silly, this is kind of goofy. I'm not really sure what to expect. That's a real prayer. 
And I would, I would say, you know, something like this. If, let's say I don't have faith, okay? Um, uh, God, if you're out there, I, this feels goofy to me. Um, and um, I'm a little embarrassed to do this, but um, I'm going to give it a try. So if, if you're there, you know, speak to me. I'll try to listen. <laughs> yeah, there, you know, there's a verse that Paul said. He said, for those, that you, for those of you that know God, and then he interrupts himself because you could tell he's dictating this. You know, he's not he's not scratching it out and rewriting it. He says, "If you, those of you who know God," and he goes, "Rather, those of you who are known of by God." And God has this beautiful statement. He says, "People come to me, Lord, Lord, and my uh, didn't we, didn't we do all these great things in your name?" And he said, "Go away from me, you ne- you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you." So if you're sitting down and talking to the Lord for the first time, just say, "Lord, my name is." is Bear Wozniak, and, and, and I'd like for you to get to know me. I'd like to get to know you. Um, if you're real, if you're out there, make yourself known to me. That, that's, mm-hmm. that's what you mean by getting real. Just I want, I want to be known by you. I want to know you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, there has to be a little bit of an act of the will in that. You, know, you have to kind of mm. um, override your sentiments and you know, your doubts uh, and be like, you know what? Um, I... I, I'm going to commit myself, despite what I'm feeling right now, I'm going to commit myself to this. Uh, so it's a little bit of like, it's kind of like get over yourself a little bit, you know, oh, like yeah. <laughs> God is bigger than God is bigger than, than you right now. And so you got to get over yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then you start out with that prayer. And then as you read, then mm-hmm. what, where would you recommend someone who's first starting where, what books or book of the Bible would you recommend they start with? Boy, that's a good question. I would say, you know, the, the Gospels are just a really great place to start. Uh, you know, the, the church speaks of the, the Gospels as really having uh, pride of place in all of scriptures. When we read the scriptures, the Lord himself is speaking to us, and especially in the New Testament, where you not only get the word of God, but you get, you get the, uh, the, uh, the words of Jesus himself and, and the, you know, the the play-by-play of, of his life. Um, outside of that, you know, the Psalms are a great place because the Psalms have a little bit of everything. Um, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling down, if, you know, you, there's even little, you can Google, um, you know, scripture passages for someone feeling overwhelmed, you know, and, mm-hmm. and there's, you could find things that, that, will, that will help with that. Um, so the Psalms are, are a really great place. Psalm 1 is great. Psalm 1 is a, is a great psalm that just, you know, basically tells of um, the, the quest of meditation and, mm-hmm. you know, meditating on God's law. Uh, and um, I believe it speaks of, um, you know, those who meditate on God's word um, are like a, a tree planted by a river. Uh, mm-hmm. And here's the thing, here's the thing, you know, there's two places where it talks about meditating God's Word. I think it's Psalm 1 and Joshua 1. Success will attend what you do, but it's probably because you're doing what God's asking you to do, first of all. But right. the word meditation in the original language is more like, it's not like this sort of Zen emptying your mind of all things. And it's more like emptying yourself so that you can hear God. It's an in- decrease, I decrease so he can increase. And the mm-hmm. word comes from the word ruminate. Mm-hmm. So it's like a cow that, you want to explain that? Yeah, so um, you know, after you after you read the scriptures, um, that's where the meditation comes in. So there's a reflection or a rumination on the scriptures, and um, God's going to use your internal faculties. He's going he's to use all your faculties to speak to you. He's going to use your meditation or your your memory. He's going to use your imagination. He's going to use your intellect, and it's kind of like chewing on those words. You know, there. You know, if you're reading something in the Gospels, there might be um, a certain character that stands out to you, or it might jog a memory that you have, mm. or you might try to, you know, compose the place. You know, what did it smell like? What did it feel like? Was it hot? Was it stinky? Was it crowded? Um, and, you know, try to place yourself in the passage as another character, or even as Jesus himself, you know, like, get into the heads of the characters and God's going to use 
all of your faculties to speak to you. He's going he's gonna to use those to draw out what he wants to tell you in his words. So that's kind of like the subjective application or the subjective appropriation of his objective word. Well, you know, it's, so it, yeah, Mary, Mary, it's just Mary pondered these things in her heart. The word ruminate mm-hmm. comes from, it's a bovine word. It's like a cow eats, uh, eats, eats some, some hay, swallows it, and then he kind of burps it back up and swallows it again. It goes into different stomachs or something. He swallows it several times. And I find when I have that morning time of prayer with the Lord, that sometimes, almost always, there'll be a certain verse that like jumps out, like you said, like it got highlighted by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Or maybe not, but then maybe t- later during the day something happens and it's like, oh, there, that scripture I read this morning, this is, that's what this is. This is kind of like that. And so you, through the day, as you, if you spend your time, you know, how many people, well, a lot of times now with interim fasting, people do it, but how many people get out of bed and go to work and don't eat till nighttime? But but I mean, if you if you if you want to have a uh, if you have a, a very uh, challenging day, you would get up and you would e- eat the right meal every day. And um, athletes know you are what you eat. If you get mm-hmm. up in the morning and you spend a little bit of time uh, chewing uh, a little bit of the word through the day, you can ruminate and chew on it again and again and again, and you'll 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 extract incredible uh, spiritual nutrients. We're talking with Peter Andrastek. He's with Evangel Evangel evangelicalcatholic.org and uh, he was giving us kind of us the pattern of his daily prayer so you were saying you, you would get up what time do you get up in the morning where do you pray um, I get up at about five in the morning and um, on good days yeah. <laughs> and I pray I pray typically right in my living room I set my coffee I'm kind of a wimp so I, I have to set my coffee uh, on a timer the night before yeah. and I got to lay my clothes out and I got to put my alarm on the other side of the room mm-hmm. so that when the alarm goes off, I get out of bed. I, you know, see my clothes laying out. I get, mm-hmm. get dressed. I come up, the coffee's all made and I, I do my prayer, um, with my coffee, with Jesus in the living room. And so oftentimes you, about, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so go ahead, fi- go ahead, finish. Y- yeah. And sometimes I, I, I have to get up that early because I've got seven kids yeah. and I got to, I got to, I got to do what I can to 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 beat but you the, know the, any the, p- potential distractions. This is it. This is just so cool. What you're saying is that, you know, you have a a, dis- a disciple is by very his very nature disciplined, and and if you want to have a prayer life, you have to take it. You have to say, I'm going to pray at this time. I'm going to pray at this place. I I took out. Um, he was called the Nigerian Nightmare. He was a pro football running back, all American running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. His name escapes me now. I took him out surfing, and this guy's after he was his career was over, he was still just ripped. And I said, "How do you stay so strong?" And he goes, "I have an appointment with myself every morning in the gym at six thirty, and everyone knows not to bother me." But what you said, which is so cool, is you get up at five in the morning. The coffee's already made. It helps wake you up. You sit in the same place every day, and you're praying before your first child awakes. But I guarantee you, from time to time, one of your children gets up and sees his father or her father praying. And that makes yes. all the difference. Leading by example, we're talking with Peter Androstek from evangelicalcatholic.org. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Go to our bookstore. We've got our, we got our new T-shirts in, Long Ride Home, cast member T-shirt that you can get there along with my books and uh, coffee cups and motorcycle patches. We have so many great things at our website. Go to deepadventure.com and check it out. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everyone to uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com. You know, Long Ride Home has had this incredible impact. More and more as we go out and visit people or we're out traveling, we're wearing our Long Ride Home t-shirt or people are wearing their t-shirts they bought at our website, people will come up to them and they go, man, I love that show. Are you on that show? Or they'll, they'll just, uh, you know, people more and more are, are really, uh, there's a a following for that TV show. Women especially love the show because they know seeing these men riding on motorcycles across the United States that uh, they can share that with their brother or their son or their, you know, their father 
and, and they will watch it because it, it, it grabs people's attentions. Uh, uh, and the thing that's cool about it is you can go to iTunes and buy the whole season or Prime Video or Google Play or, or YouTube TV. Or if you really want to partner with us, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. And like, if you become, I think it's a Patreon donor. I, I forget what level it is. I think it's 20, the $20 a month level. If you become a donor at that level, you get all of season one sent to you. So you can download it to you. All of season two, which is just now airing on EWTN. You know, uh, season one air, airs on EWTN and on Armed Forces Network. So it's, it's legit cinematic and, and gritty enough stuff to be in the Armed Forces Network. And then also, right, at, season two will be airing on EWTN, but that means we're working on season three. As soon as we get the director's cut of the first episode of season three, you get that immediately. Plus, you get uh, an advanced release of all the YouTube versions of our Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show. So you may get our radio shows a month or two or three months early. So please go to our website, deepadventure.com, become a Patreon donor. We uh, do this only by your help. Um, uh, EW10 doesn't provide us anything for doing our show, our radio show, and our TV show. They provide about a fourth of what it costed to do it. So the rest of it is all called miracle money, and we'd like, we'd love it if you're going to be, you could be, if you feel you're receiving from the ministry, if you would also give to our ministry. We have Peter Andrastak from EvangelicalCatholic.org on our show today, and it's not fair. I've been asking him about his prayer life, and we're not even after 5:01 a.m. in the morning. So. <laughs> Okay, so you're up at 5 in the morning. You have a place in your living room that you've set aside. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing that you do? Um, I just kind of sit and quiet myself. and Well, I take a drink of coffee. And then I, <laughs> uh, I, I quiet myself. You know, I'm tempted. I'm, I tend to be kind of a doer. And so I'm tempted to, to just dive right into the meditation of Scripture or whatever I'm sitting with. Um, so I have to kind of hold myself back and just give this time to God. I have to kind of say, okay, Lord, here I am. I'm tired. Um, help me to listen to you. Help me to give this time to you. This time is yours. Um, whatever you want to talk to me about. And I just, I, I try to sit in silence and be receptive for, you know, a good three to five minutes before I jump into the, to the doing part. Of and, then, and then you wake up and sip another cup of coffee. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. He, yeah. <laughs> but no, that's so important. I, I'm exactly like you, Peter. I have a, a book I'm reading or, or something, the Liturgy of the Hours, and I want to dive in. And I don't take that moment to reflect and say, this is all for you, Lord, and quiet your mind and say, you know, your servant is listening. So beautiful. So then, you, so, you, so you begin your, so tell us uh, now the highlight of your, is it a half hour? Do you, are you able to go do an hour of prayer in the morning or? So I tend to do about a half hour in the morning, and then um, I also do a half hour of mental prayer sometime in the afternoon or the evening. Praise God. Um, and uh, that's, that's done. Sometimes I'm able to go to a church and do it in a church. Um, sometimes I do that at home. Um, that's kind of varied. You know, as lay people, you know, we get we get the grace to pray in situations that would drive a monk nuts. So <laughs> that, um, that, that, that is such a beautiful. Thank you for <laughs> saying that. That's so beautiful because some of us feel like, oh, here I am. I'm praying the rosary in the elevator. Well, that's because of your station in life and you're carving out that that little slice for God. But, say that, that again. That's right. How did you say that again? It was so beautiful. As lay people, we get the grace to pray in situations that would drive a monk nuts nuts. Now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to, you know, stack the deck and, you know, try to avoid those distractions. And we definitely should, but you know, life happens and we live busy lives and the Lord wants us to live busy lives, not, not overly busy lives where there's a lack of order, um, but he wants us to be busy. He wants us to, to have full, fun, adventurous lives. And that means that, um, you know, the Lord said to pray always. And, um, you can't pray always if you don't set aside time sp specifically for prayer. But as we set aside time specifically for prayer, that should bleed out into the rest of our lives. And mm. so, um, and that takes a lot. Like I, I also get to daily mass. Um, I pray a daily rosary. I pray the Angelus at noon. I do 15 minutes of spiritual reading. Um, I do an examination of conscience at night. Um, you know, so you're I, living, I get, you're, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I get to confession every week. Um, I need to. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the, the more you go to confession, 
um, and with spiritual direction. That's the other thing. You know, you, 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 a person needs spiritual direction. And the more you get to confession, the more you examine your conscience, actually, the, the more grace is like a magnifying glass. And um, it magnifies. You, you do get to a point where you're not confessing mortal sins, um, hardly ever, you know, ever. Um, and you get to the point where you're confessing venial sins, and sometimes you're confessing, um, you know, simply imperfections, and, and you get underneath the, the material sins, and you start confessing your motivations and um, bad um, in, interior habits, those sorts of things. Well, why, why, would that, you have, why would you have to go to confession? If you're, if, you're not, if you're not a practicing Catholic, uh, how do you explain the, the graces of, 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 the, of that sacrament? How? Well, you know, as, as Catholics, we um, are not minimalists, we're maximalists, because um, God is love, and, um, you know, love, love is its own explanation. Anyone who really and truly loves um, knows that love is its own explanation. And so as we grow in love with someone, we want to spend more and more time with that person. And we want to root out of our, out of our mind and our heart, anything, anything that's contrary to that. Um, even if there are little things that are contrary. Um, so, you know, the, the grace of confession is, it's a, it's a, it's a confession is a, a sacrament of healing. And um, we're all pretty wounded and, and busted up from life, um, oftentimes in ways that we don't even know, ways that we don't even realize. And the grace of the sacrament, you know, not only, um, not only forgives us and, and heals us, but it, it, it reveals the ways that we're broken and so that we can get healed. Um, it's, it's, and the more we do it, the more surgical uh, we become at examining ourselves mm. and it's a sacrament of joy mm. um, it, it's there's there's nothing like leaving the confessional no I remember a time in my life when I went every day in Hawaii I lived right next to the church and they had afternoon confessions and there was just some person in my life that I would get so upset with and every time I'd got a blow it I'd go to confession almost every day and I know that that just that simple act of humility to go there and 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 recognize my failing and it brought that grace. I think of the sacrament of reconciliation, like skydiving too. It's kind of like uh, for people that haven't been in a while, you might be really scared. You know, like it might, mm-hmm. I always ask people uh, in Hawaii, yeah, I want to go skydiving. Okay. Well, you do. Yeah. I really, really want to. Okay. Uh, we'll go next week. Yeah, I'm going to go. And then I have them, I shake their hand and if it's all clammy, I know they're serious, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and for a lot of people right now, Peter, there's a lot of them that go, I, I'd love to go to confession, but, it's too. It's been too long. I, I'll be rejected. It's going to be too scary. And it's kind of like that moment when you walk into the church. You drive by it several times. I need to go. I need to go. And then finally, you stop the car. You pull in, and you're the first one in because you want to get in and out before anybody else. And you you stand there. Maybe there's three people in line in front of you. Instead, it's like being in an airplane when there's a dozen people. And they're all going to jump out, and little by little, they all <laughs> jump out. And next thing you know, the door's opening, and you got to go into the confessional. And there's that moment of, of dread. And then, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I don't know how to do my, the words properly. Will you help me, Father? Can you help me to make a good confession? And then as you begin to open up your heart, um, it's like when someone jumps off of an airplane. There's this tremendous thrill that goes through your heart when you jump out of an airplane. Same thing when you go to confession. You begin to feel that you're being on low. It's like you have this, like that, uh, you're, you have this freedom to fly and the beautiful thing about confession, so many people go to counselors and they confess all their sins, but they don't get absolution, you know. But when you go to the confessional, I've heard, Peter, I've heard so many testimonies of it starting in the confessional when the, 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 the grace and the mercy of the Lord has, has broken through. And I love what you said. As Catholics, we're not minimalists. Yeah, you know, you can go to the Lord and ask Jesus to forgive you. He'll forgive you. But why not have it all? We have the fullness of faith, and in the confessional, we receive that healing. You're not, and by the way, when you offend, when you when you sin, you you sin not just against God, but you've sinned against others, the church, other people, people you may not even know for generations. You've affected someone in some way that affects their whole life, uh, and 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 you, and and you've wounded your own soul. And so it's reconciliation mm-hmm. with God. 
with the church, with others, and with your own soul. So it's a full, as you said, as Catholic. I love that. What was the statement you said about we're not minimalists? How did you phrase that? We're maximalists. We we want to do everything we can um, to to grow in intimacy with God and with each other. Yeah, there's this crazy commercial about Vegas now where it says you can have it all or something like that. It's just so revolting to me. But you can have, when you have Jesus Christ in your life, you have the most infinite. I mean, you have you have it all. And so go to, I really highly recommend you go to confession. And if you're scared, that's even better because facing your fears is a lot of fun. It's, it's the best part of life. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wastick Adventure. We're talking with B- Peter Andrastek with evangelicalcatholic.org. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure with uh, Deep Adventure Ministries. I want to uh, actually invite you to invite me to come speak. Uh, we love to speak at men's conferences. Uh, we love to talk with the Legatus groups because I'm a, people don't know I'm a, I've worked for uh, what they call Big Four CPA with a couple different CPA firms. I ha- I've had my own firm, so I kind of get the business special adversity and challenges of a business person but we'd love to come speak i've been so busy filming long ride home now we're we have several seasons in the can and we're working on editing it so i have a little bit more time to come speak so we'd love for you to go to deepadventure.com and i think there's a little button that says invite bear to speak we'd love for you to go do that go to our website our our website drives our webmasters crazy because we have so much content they don't even know how do we tell people that you have the ocean sunrise catechism every morning at 7 a.m wherever you are in the world the camera comes on and the Catechism is there with the sunrise of the, on the ocean behind you. How do you tell them we have these Bear Wozniak on-chained little two- and three-minute segments that pop up on, on video, usually with your wife Cindy doing something fun, or maybe it's something dangerous, or maybe it's something spiritual. Uh, or we have the, uh, the, the, uh, the manliness of videos that we shoot. Or, or we have, uh, oh, I can't even remember all the different categories when we're on a pilgrimage. We have so many different categories on our, on our website. So much of it is video. So many great things. So... Go to our website, deepadventure.com, and, and hey, subscribe to our email. And also, if you go to YouTube, the Bear Wozniak channel, uh, go to Bear Wozniak and subscribe. Every time we post up a new YouTube video, you will be notified. So our radio show that goes out on EW10 and all kinds of podcast formats, uh, Sirius FM and all that, it is also a YouTube video. So you can get online and actually watch the show, and it's really pretty cool to kind of get to know our guests better that way. So our guest today is Peter Andrastek. He's the, he has um, started the organization evangelicalcatholic.org. I'm going to just read this to everyone because I haven't really given you the full introduction. We kind of dove in, Peter. But you lead parish missions uh, in the Catholic Church. You hold a Master's of Theological Studies from Ave Maria University. Did they give you that degree or did they want to just get rid of you or did you earn that degree? They actually let you... With a degree in theological studies. That's pretty cool. A little bit of both. Little bit and he both. works in adult formation, and, uh, and he gives retreats. So we're just so thrilled to have you, and you live in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. So, Peter, uh, welcome back for this final segment of, the, of our uh, radio show. Now, we've spent so much time just talking about prayer, but can I talk to you now about your, your life mission? What is evangelicalcatholic.org, and, and what is it that... Um, how, how can people invite you to come and all of that. What, what is your mission? Yeah, so at the Evangelical Catholic, we um, equip ministries to drive dynamic outreach. And so um, what we do at the Evangelical Catholic is actually less about like parish missions and speaking events. We do do some of that, but primarily what we do is we form and equip parish ministries kind of over the long haul. We work with ministries for a year, two years, sometimes three or more years, and apprentice them into an approach to parish ministry um, that that it focuses on um, accompaniment. And so um, think of it like small batch Catholicism. So everyone gets that, you know, we think of like small batch, you know, beer and small batch, you know, whiskey. That's always like, ooh, like the best kind of stuff, right? 
Um, well, think of this like small batch Catholicism, right? This, what Jesus did is he started small batch Catholicism. He, he had a big enough vision, you know, the whole world, reconciling the world back to the Father. But he, he had this big enough vision to think really small. And he started with 12 guys. And he spent time with those 12 guys. And he formed them and equipped them as disciples and sent them out to do the same. And we think of what um, St. Dominic did and St. Francis and St. Jose Maria and um, St. Ignatius. Small batch Catholicism, small group of guys, you know, walked with them and then sent them out to do the same. And so we teach parishes campus, and campus ministries. And now we're actually working with the archdiocese for the U.S. military. Uh, so we're working on military oh, bases as well. praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Hey, have them watch our show. You've got to get them to watch Long Ride Home. Okay, the Armed Forces we'll Network loves it. Okay. Will do. So we just, we, we teach uh, parishes, parish ministries, this approach, uh, where we take a, a small group of people and form them and equip them in habits of discipleship and send them out as apostles uh, in, in the world. And the parish, uh, we, we teach a parish how to scale this approach, how to do this with uh, one small batch of, of Catholics and then another small batch of Catholics and another small batch of Catholics, and then how to shepherd those people in their lives. That's so po- it's so powerful. You know, uh, what you just look at when you look at Paul, he, you know, on his, you know, he, he had Barnabas first kind of uh, shepherd, mentored him. And then, mm-hmm. and then you see Paul with Silas and Timothy and, and Luke, and you see this small group kind of formed around him that became his core. He needed their support too. And yes. I, I think if you, I, I'm part of, um, I'm sure you know Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. They've probably inter- mm-hmm. interviewed you. I was out there. Um, their uh, conference recently in Dallas. And the goal of, of Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance is one million men in small cell groups in America. And if we, if, if we, can, we can, and we should, and we will do that, it'll transform the church. It, but, it, but it starts with that small core group. It's that small cell group. It's, you know, I remember years ago, this group of guys, I'm going to get together with one of them right after we're done. We're going to have, have breakfast. Um, because the show is recorded. I don't eat breakfast at 7 in the evening when it, after it plays. But, but um, we, uh, about several years ago, we had a group text. Um, 60 push-ups, 60 crunches, 60 minute workouts, 60 minutes of prayer. And we would text it, our, each other through the day, just kind of hold each other, kind of challenge each other to keep it going. You know? And then it became, hey, I really need your prayer in this area. I really need your help in this area. But that small, you need you know, a, a small group of men or, 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 or of couples or of people, just the cell group approach. Is, is, isn't something novel, is it? It's not something new. It's the way Jesus did it. Right. Jesus was very, very human. Um, and, and I don't mean that in the way that sometimes people say, oh, you know, we're just human. No, it's not just. The, the, the call mm. of a human being is very, very high. Mm. And uh, Jesus, yet, you know, as being a human, he had a, a, a human heart mm. and he, he desired human relationships. And um, this is the model, knowing humanity, it says in the gospel, you know, knowing humanity, um, knowing humanity, he, he gave us this approach. Jesus could have done it any way, at any time, at, in any way, um, but he chose to do it this way, um, with small groups of people, uh, with real friendship, real relationship. You know, faith is caught more than it's mm-hmm. taught. Uh, and we need teaching, we need to study, we need those things. Um, really, but ab- above all, it's caught. Um, and it's caught uh, through relationships, authentic relationships. Pope Benedict um, wrote some years ago, he wrote this little article about the law of the mustard seed. He mm-hmm. talked about the new, the new evangelization follows the law of the mustard seed. Uh, and that's what Jesus started. That You look at any, almost any movement of renewal in the church, um, it started with, with a mustard seed. And that's all we're trying to do with, at the Evangelical Catholic, a, a long, slow burn uh, at parishes that starts w- as a mustard seed. Well, you know, it's like it, you, on your website, you, have, you talk about how Jesus and a small group of disciples, uh, it, it became the greatest, it, it's, great, it's the biggest organi- organism or organization in the world, starting mm-hmm. with that, just that small group. And I love what you said, apostolic holiness. We, I'm going to keep coming back to that because... Uh, we, we've spent the first three quarters of our time together talking about the holiness part, the personal mm-hmm. relationship, the prayer, the sacramental life. And then now, now we, we go out. Now our, 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 our outreach begins, and it, and it comes out of an overflow. So 
there's nothing worse than someone giving you um, yesterday's bread, you know. <laughs> we need to bring people a fresh word. Uh, what the Lord's been, what the Lord is speaking to you, you can give out to others. Uh, we just have a we just have a couple minutes left, or actually about a minute or so left. What would you say to the person right now that's listening to you, that feels like they have to be on the other side of the room or sit in the back of the church that they're not worthy? How do they approach Jesus? How do they enter back into the life of the church too? Well, the first words that come to my mind uh, are the words that we say before the communion, right? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, mm. uh, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I would say that the feeling of unworthiness um, or the, the, the sense of humility is actually precisely the condition uh, for approaching God. Um, if we approach God like the Pharisee, uh, you know, all high and mighty and, you know, thank God I'm not like this, you know, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like this tax collector and this and that, you know, that's, you know, Jesus was not happy with that approach. Rather, he wants us to approach him uh, from the depths of a humble and contrite heart. So I'd like to spin that on its head a little bit, that, that for the person who's feeling not worthy to approach God, um, you know, it's a mystery, you know, on the one hand you could say, well, you know, we are worthy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But, but in a truer sense, you're right. None of us, none of us are worthy for it. And that's precisely, that's precisely the condition for fruitful prayer and fruitful relationship with so, God. So we began this conversation by Peter saying the first thing you got to do is get real with God. And I remember my father, when he gave his life to the Lord, he said, Hey, I, I'm not ready. And then they said, Hey, it's a come as you are party. Just get real with just get real with the Lord. We're talking with Peter Andrastek from evangelicalcatholic.org. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We invite you to go to evangelicalcatholic.org and find out more about how Peter can be be part of helping you renew your the life of your church. And to go to deepadventure.com and find out more, more about our ministry. Uh, until next week, uh, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.